and welcome back to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me Jim Grieg. He is the president uh, uh, of Benchmark Metals, and this is a company, of course, I've been following now for a couple of years. It's really doing a great job of outlining and uh, establishing a very substantial gold and silver deposit in, uh, in British Columbia uh, on the lawyer's deposit, on the lawyer's project, and it's really a very great to have Jim with me. Thanks for joining me again, Jim. Always a pleasure to be on your show, Jay. It's always uh, good to talk to people who are having success. It's more fun anyway, and you guys have been yeah. doing quite quite well. I know that you set out, uh, I see, you know, initially when I first started following you, and that's, you know, a year or so ago, uh, talking about a minimum $5 million, $5 million gold equivalent ounce uh, resource. Um, how are you? How do you feel you're doing in that regard? Well, our our 5 million ounce target uh, would be something we think we could achieve perhaps with another year of drilling uh, through 2021 and into 2022. Mm -hmm. However, our our near-term resource, uh, we're anticipating a brand new bulk tonnage resource estimate uh, for the end of Q1 next year. So conceivably in about three months' time, we should have what appears to be a multi-million ounce gold silver resource um all at surface gold and silver ounces so we're quite excited um about this achievement and uh, leading up to this we'll have uh, a lot of drill results coming out through january and into late february yeah you had a uh an 87,000 meter program 387 drill holes that's quite a substantial program um, and results, uh, you say, I guess they're backed up in the lab, and so you expect to have have them out. Um, when did you say the end of this next quarter? The end of this year? Yeah, well, we, this is we, the end of year. we. That's right. Yeah, the end of the first quarter of this year, we'll have the resource estimate. But um, as part of the resource estimate, of course, is all the recent drilling that we just completed. So. We've let out um, some holes, not not a comprehensive list of holes, but the, this is partly due to the fact that the laboratories are anywhere from eight to ten weeks behind. So we anticipate um, a lot of results coming forward now right through to January and February, and at the tail end of these results, we should be putting out that new resource estimate. Yeah, and uh, that's really certainly something that people will be looking forward to. Your targets here, I believe, at this stage are really open pit or or surface uh, deposits, are they not? That's right, yeah. Um, It's all open pitable uh, type mining scenarios that we're looking to achieve here. Uh, There's three large zones with gold and silver mineralization right at surface, uh, there is potential for underground mining, and we have uh, drilled some deeper holes and hit some good mineralization at depth. Uh, but, of course, that would follow the open pit mining in later years. And you've had, um, I don't know if it's a historical resource or of some sort there, right, in the past? Yeah, that's right. When we took over this project uh, well over two years ago, uh, we compiled some of the historical data and we had a a small resource to begin with. Uh, But through the course of the last two years, we've extended all these zones by hundreds of meters up to 1.2 kilometers in the Mm -hmm. largest zone. Um, so, you know, the the gold and silver silver mineralization is truly growing rapidly, not only on strike, but at depth. Um, so this this is really the maiden bulk tonnage uh, resource estimate that we'll be putting out. Um, the initial resource was a very small, high-grade uh, resource built on all old data from many years ago. And this is um, in, in northern northern British Columbia in the, in the Golden Triangle, but it's the... Uh, you know, things have improved an awful lot there in terms of um, infrastructure, have they not, in the last 10, 20 years or so? Yeah, that's right. We're, I mean, this was a formerly producing mine, um, but uh, we are in a road accessible area of north central British Columbia. Uh, it truly is a proven and prolific area. There's a world class gold copper mine that sits 45 kilometers from us. Uh, that's the uh, Kames Gold Copper Mine. Mm hmm. And so we truly are in a district where you can explore, 
permit and put a mine into production. And we're looking to do this in, in a very short time period, um, giving we have quite a robust treasury. We can pay for the next two years work uh, to get us to a mining decision and a feasibility study in 2022. And um, in 2022, you're, you're an economic and feasibility study. All right. that That's um, looking forward to that for sure. But uh, I guess the drivers will be, you know, resources and some of your, your numbers. Um, uh, the numbers that are coming out, we're looking forward to those and uh, should be what gets people uh, – Tuned in. Now, your share price has been sort of flat recently. It's not. It's not been yeah. doing a lot. I suppose in part because there's been not a lot of information coming. But it certainly looks like a uh, like like a uh, a very possible, uh, really good story from what I can see in terms of its um, in, in terms of the size. And I I guess you really you probably need something uh, get you get you in up over five million ounces. Um, to really get people excited about it. And how far do you think that you would take this yourselves? I mean, is this something you wouldn't go into production? I suppose you'd probably be looking for someone, a major that would come along and be hungry for another 5 million ounces of gold. Ideally, yes, Jay. Uh, we would like to set this up to a, a situation where um, we can prove um, – Prove a large amount of ounces, but also move along the permitting path and then have a major miner take us over. That would be ideal. Uh, but until that time occurs, uh, we continue to work towards um, engineering efforts and expanding the resource area. So over the next three to six months, I think you'll see a lot of robust news flow and achievements and milestones coming from Benchmark. Uh, you'll see drill results over the next two months. That'll be followed by this large bulk tonnage resource estimate. And then on the back of the resource estimate, we're, we're already in planning stages here to complete a preliminary economic assessment. So that would be our first economic study on this project. Mm-hmm. Well, that, uh, that's certainly something to look forward to. And um, so, I mean, it really so much of this industry and, and especially in the exploration sector, hinges on how well the markets are doing for gold and silver. And, you know, I just, in my introductory segment here, I talked a little bit about some of the va- some of the views of, of folks like Michael Oliver, who's a frequent guest on this show, and he's, he's just extremely bullish on gold and silver. Um, I, I guess the other side of it, though, is the cost. And if we're in, heading into an inflationary period of time, uh, that is something also that needs to be considered. But um, what are what are your thoughts about, and what is the, are the thoughts of management about about this uh, gold and silver market uh, now and going forward? Yeah, I think we're we're in um, a good area right now in the precious metal sector. Uh, the fundamentals are quite strong here to support higher gold and silver prices, and um, you know a lot of it's COVID related, of course, um, but there's such extreme debt. And money printing happening not only in Canada in, and in the U.S., but around the world. And uh, this enormous debt that's being created is very supportive of higher gold and silver prices. It, it certainly seems to be. And, and one wonders, uh, I, I believe that, that was true before COVID. In terms of COVID now, um, what are what is the protocol? Are your people able to, to move in and out of out of there, or you have people that are stationed up there that are doing the work, or, or how are you functioning with COVID? We we actually just finished our uh, program um, in mid December uh, weeks ago, and uh, through the course of um, about uh, five, well, almost almost six months of work in the field, we didn't encounter one single COVID case. We're following very strict protocols that most of the miners use, Mm -hmm. uh, and that does include wearing masks and prohibiting um, visitors or or, uh, new people from entering our project area without uh, notice to uh, keep some strict quarantine measures in place. So we were quite successful with um, no sickness or no problems this year, and I, I would anticipate we follow this same type of program into the spring and summer of next year as well. Now, I'm noticing that uh, on the 21st of December, you announced uh, the acquisition of PPM Phoenix. Can you talk about that? 
Sure, and that that's a bit of a legacy, um, a, a final announcement. Uh, that was part of our acquisition of this lawyers project um, mm-hmm. in 2019, and it was a bit of a, uh, I'll say, uh, paperwork took a while to officially come out in documentation. Um, but that was a, an announcement that was actually completed um, well over a year ago. So okay. the the Phoenix Precious Metals is actually the private owner of this ground, and we took over 100% ownership of it uh, last year. Subject to any uh, any uh, royalties or anything? There's a there's a small 0.5% royalty, um, but Benchmark does indeed hold 100% of the ground in the claims. All right. Um, so I guess what we need to be keep our eyes on um, early. Uh, well, I guess, what did you say, late Q1? Uh, no, no, that's the maiden resource. and so That's right, yeah. So news results will, will um, be coming uh, out soon. I would anticipate um, right through all of January and February, you should mm-hmm. see regular news flow on gold and silver uh, drill intercepts. Well, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if we get a strong gold market and silver market um, along with some Robust numbers. The share price would uh, would respond to that quite nicely. I, I'm I'm expecting and hoping as a shareholder it does. So uh, anyway, anything anything else you'd like to conclude with today? Yeah, I just think that timing is quite good for us with um, the majority of our results uh, to come from the lab uh, with a good run in gold and silver here in the new year. I think it bodes well for uh, a much higher market cap and benchmark. All righty. Uh, very good. Well, uh, we'll leave it go at that. And uh, thank you very much, Jim, for uh, for your time. And uh, we look forward to uh, keeping up with you in the new year. Very good, Jay. Thanks. Thanks for uh, listening to the story and your support. You bet. It, uh, we're, we're just trying to make some money, that's for sure. And I think there's a good shot <laughs> with the benchmark. All right. Thanks, thanks so much, Jim. 